today I'm going to take you through a typical voiceover session, the do's and don'ts, what you can do during the session to speed things up, and the process of improving the audio ready for post-production. I hope you enjoy, and we'll see you on the other end. There's also the human safety factor to consider if using formalin. One alternative is to use healthy hooves. It no, I'll, I'll start. How does it, uh, one alternative is so go from somewhere further back. Enabling you to dissolve copper or zinc more effectively. It keeps the foot bath at a low pH, enabling solute. Always turn your Skype off, yeah, as well as your mobile phone. While the voiceover is waiting, you can you can do all sorts of fixes. So you, uh, by the time you export it out, you saved a lot of time. So while he's analysing what he has to read, um, go in and clean up. Uh, a good idea is to do the intro press. You can see there, if I extend that out, you'll see that is the keyboard click. And those will be in every single drop in and drop out point. So you need to clean those up. So just move them away. Put a little fade on the end of that. A competent foot trimmer will be able to diagnose the cause of lameness and by review. See the double breath there, so let's just clean that up. Of lameness and by review. Also, there's a timing discrepancy here. It's a very expensive choice to pay. It's too close together, so we're going to just widen it a little um, because it's unnatural to speak that soon. So it's here. It's a very expensive choice depends on a number of factors. Make sure you get the breaths right. There's always a breath taken. It's a human being, he needs to breathe. So make sure you don't clip the breath, otherwise it does sound like a drop-in. As you can see, the audio is quite uh, variable. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna increase the maximum level of the audio. So if you imagine the edge of the audio uh, being the loudest, uh, anything beyond that will clip. So this is fairly, uh, moderate volume, which is perfect for us. Um, I've decided to put on the compressor first before I EQ. Um, this will just even out the levels, especially for voiceover work. Um, just set your thresholds again uh, and don't overdo it. Producers across the world are in uh, with added volume, uh, you're going to find your noise floor will increase. Find a quiet spot uh, in your audio chain and pull up a denoise of some kind, anyone will do. Uh, pull up your thresholds and move your reduction up to a point that doesn't affect the actual audio itself. So double check it against that. A competent foot trimmer will carefully examine the cow's foot before then checking it using the five-point Dutch method. Next, uh, we're going to EQ the track. Uh, first of all, I'm going to look for the box in this. It's normally around about three to 400 uh, kilohertz, um, or hertz rather. <clears throat> so we raise the volume on the, on the notch filter. You can see it's a very narrow bandwidth and it's as it sweeps through the sound you can pick up the boxiness, the, the sound that's not desirable and quite fatiguing to listen to and then simply just roll it out. Um, in audio we call it rolling off. Number two. And now I'm going to go back to the native EQ. All your programs will have an EQ channel on it and what we're going to do is roll out the bottom end so anything from 60 hertz down which will be things like street rumble and that sort of thing uh, and then give a slight boost at about 200k 100 150k just to give the the voice some gravitas uh, the next uh, part of the EQ is the central bit, the information, the, the bit that you can hear. Generally our microphones these days are fairly cheap and they're quite sibilanty. I'm just looking for that middle bit and then I'm going to roll that off a little, just not too much. And then the top end will just give it a little bit of what we call air at the top, the magic, um, which gives it, the again, the clarity that we're looking for. Uh, one of the side effects of uh, the clarity end is that we increase the sibilance, the S's and the sh's, especially on, uh, with cheap microphones, as I've said. Uh, so we use a de-esser. Uh, we find the, whether it's male or female for the frequency settings, and then we move the threshold down till we start seeing a peaking taking place on the attenuator. You can overdo it, uh, but we generally just try and get it to catch those little S's that are uh, become fatiguing to listen to and it softens it to prevent new infections from occurring 
To get the most out of your foot bathing regime, there are a few things you need to consider. Uh, when de what tends to happen is you lose the top end, uh, go back to your EQ and just boost up just a tad, and then um, the, the best thing you can do is to make sure that you hit the bypass button, you can see on and off, just double checking what, what you had before and what you've got now to ensure that you haven't overdone it. It's a very easy thing to do. The final thing to do is to increase the levels uh, up to zero or as close to zero as possible. And the best thing to do is use a dynamic multiband compressor. In this case, we're using the multi-maximizer, which contains a very useful mastering bus compressor and also the opportunity of doing last minute EQs. Um, I got my preset up and I pushed my threshold to a position where my levels are increased, pulling all the volumes up but doing it in a way that only a master bus compressor can do. And this just gives it that polish at the end of the day. Now this you apply to your master bus, not to each individual channel. If you've got two dialogues going on or three dialogues plus any atmospherics, you want to treat the entire thing as one overall volume level. When using healthy hooves for the first time, it's recommended that daily foot bathing takes place for the first three weeks at both morning and afternoon. Um, we've got to test that the audio is going to work with the video now, so uh, we're going to export this out and I'll just show you quickly how, what the settings are. The settings for the audio are very important for video, it's 48 kilohertz. If you're working on a Mac, an A file is the one you want to work with. If you're working on a PC, then WAV will be the one you'd want to set. And make sure you're on 48. 4816 is a standard setting. And then just simply export. Oh, there is, yeah. I've got a bung in. So there you are. Um, that's pretty much a session. Um, there will be loads of questions and I haven't covered everything, but it's something that I will be talking about in the near future, uh, hopefully more and more. So thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.